Hey there. Hello. Happy Thursday. I'm Danny Gregory. Uh, I don't think I'm on the wrong channel. Am I? There's a bunch of people here. Okay. I'm not sure what to say because I'm live here. <clears throat> I'm not sure what to say. Hi, you're here. Celeste is here. Fran is here. We are here. Okay. So maybe you're in the wrong place. I'm not sure what to tell you. Okay. Celeste is here, so I don't know why I'm not being ready. Okay. Anyway. <sighs> That's one of those days, my friends. Good morning. And um, <clears throat> threw me off a bit. Uh, yes. Leaf blowers are here today in full force. And um, wow, now Chris is calling JJ the critic. Nice. She's not the critic. She is a very nice person. But this is Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory. It's Thursday. And today is going to be really fun. Today we're going to do something kind of wacky. Uh, I've been experimenting with it. I enjoy it. I hope you'll enjoy it too. I'll get to it in a minute. Um, today is also, uh, well, it's my birthday in a, in a little while, in a weekish, weekish. So I am going to be, um, well, taking next week off, sort of taking it off, kind of taking it off. So we won't be drawing together next Thursday. Alas, so I'm taking, that's my <laughs> birthday treat to myself. Not really. To not draw with you, that's not really what my birthday treat is. No. No, it's not. It's, um, it's we're going out of town and I won't have good Wi-Fi. That's all. But I'm looking forward to it. It's really kind of the first weekend that we've taken as a family in, I don't know, in the first mini vacation in a huge amount of time. So I'm really glad to be doing that. Um, this weekend, starting this, well, tomorrow, tomorrow evening, we are, <laughs> tomorrow evening, Saturday, this weekend, we're going to have, of course, an amazing workshop. So that's going to be a busy weekend full of stuff. Uh, weekend, workshop weekends are always a big deal here in our house. We tell everybody we can't see you, although eventually we get done with the workshop and we get to go out, but it's, it's a lot of fun. We um, are all a little bit on edge because we're so excited, and this weekend is going to be no exception. Although, you know, we used to have all kinds of technical problems, and that was part of the anxiety around doing workshops. It was like, oh my God, is things going to go well? But these days, knock cardboard, they do go well. So that's great. Um, <sighs> cats just passed, I think, 60. So I'm on my way to the 100 cats that I've pledged to do. I pledged based on our meeting a couple weeks ago where I disastrously screwed up our feline friends as I tried to draw them. It was a disaster. I pledged I'm going to draw 100 cats, and I'm now 60% of the way through. So yes, it is good. Ah, JJ, you are on, right? You're on. Okay, good. Um, so yes, so that's coming along really, it's actually coming along better than I thought. I'm enjoying drawing cats. I have to say, I'm finding that cats are less varied than dogs are. It may not come as a surprise, but I'm finding that cats kind of are falling into a fairly small number of categories. Whereas dogs and dog faces and dog bodies run the gamut. Cats are just generally less, maybe less bred by people. They're independent creatures. We haven't distorted them as much as we have dogs. So I'm finding when I'm drawing them, I'm kind of getting it down. I'm getting it down. So, um, Thistle, are you working towards 100 cats too? That is really good. Janice, only at 20. Got to keep working. Deborah, 14. All right. Well, I am at 61, I think. 
61. No, 57, because I, yes, I, I'll explain when I show them to you. But yes, I'm, I'm about 60, 60-ish. Um, what else did I want to tell you about? Sorry, there's a, there's a small non-cat pug wandering around snorting around here in my studio. Yes, I'm talking about you. Twiggy is here in the studio. Twiggy's in the studio. And uh, yes, Twiggy is... Um, maybe I'll have to do 100 drawings of Twiggy next. Could be another good thing. Do you want what me to get her out of here? No, she's okay. I mean, she's just snorting a lot. She's snorting, yes. Leaf blowers, snorting. It's one of those days in the wild of draw with me. So, um, what else? I've been, I've been um, playing a lot with art supplies. It's something I want to kind of think more about and write about, about this, the fun of having lots of art supplies right here. Not, I mean, I have them stuffed in drawers and boxes too, but I also have them here in front of me. And that's a real luxury. I don't know how you feel about that, but... Um, you know, let me, I'll show you. Let me, let me go over here. Um, you know, so I just have piles of stuff everywhere. Right, so there's piles of stuff. Well, there's computer equipment and stuff like that, but there's markers. There's just stuff. And uh, having it all here is really just having it out. Having it out and available. Having, I have lots of different kinds of sketchbooks that I'm playing with and trying out too. And so I'm just, I'm not being precious. I am jumping in. I'm jumping in and I am grabbing stuff and I'm just, you know. One thing, I'm also quite liking the fact that I have these mini, minis to work in. Like I'm working in these tiny little sketchbooks that I got from Anamula. It's just like, it's nothing. It's nothing to just make something turn the page, make another thing. And that's kind of how I'm approaching my 100 cats. Little boom, boom, boom. Just knock them out, keep going. So, yeah, so that's, that's kind of my, my perspective. Um, so, yes. Rosalind, hello. Welcome. You don't have to call me Mr. Gregory. You can call me Dr. Gregory or Lord Gregory. Um, but welcome, and I'm glad that you're doing stuff here. And draw a cat. Draw one cat. Maybe a disaster, as I found that it can be. But yes, have fun and just draw some cats. It's not a big deal. So, all right, today I'm going to play with a device. And you, it's a device you may have and may not have used. So, if you have a Macintosh computer, a Macintosh computer, that nobody calls them Macintoshes anymore, but if you have a Mac, an Apple computer of some kind, or an iPad, or even an iPhone, I think you'll be able to do this. And even if you don't, if you have a PC, if you have any kind of a tablet, you'll probably have a version of this application that I'm going to be showing you. It's a, I remember when I first got a computer that had this app on it, I thought, whoa, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. But that was a really long time ago. My son was pretty small when it happened, so it was maybe 15 or 20 years ago that they came out with a thing that's called Photo Booth. Photo Booth. Does that sound familiar at all? Photo Booth? Let me see if I can pull it up. Photo Booth, yes. This is Photo Booth. Okay? Let me just show you Photo Booth. Let me get it in, and let me turn it on. And so Photo Booth. It's this thing that allows you to do all kinds of things with it, right? It's, it's like, if you have kids, it's, wow, that's really fun. It's really crazy. You can do all kinds of strange things with it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Does this sound familiar? It may be buried in your computer. I didn't even know that I had it anymore. I was like, wow, do I even have this thing anymore? It's really not very flattering. Um, but it is, it is going to be interesting for us today to use. All right. Okay. So do you, all, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Photo booth. So it's a distorting thing. And I think that there is a version of this on... Um, there's a version of this on for iOS. I'm pretty sure. It may even be called photo booth. So if you don't have it right now, that's fine. You can 
you can share some of the silly photos that I've been working with. Um, but if you do, you know, then turn it on and let's try it out. Okay. So it's a thing that like when you first get it, you spend, you know, half an hour playing around with it. It's kind of fun. It's kind of silly. You forget it. You think I never have any use for it today, but I'm thinking there might be a use for it. Okay. So, um, let me show you like, uh, Can I turn this around here? Yeah. You know, so it's it can become the basis for reference that we can use to make to make drawings. This is drawn from one of those crazy photos. So essentially what you do is you can do a distortion without really having to s make your brain hurt. Do you see what I'm saying? So w this is this is in a way, a crazy caricature, right? But um, let me show you. It's kind of actually this photo. It's this photo. I'm not sure if I can. Yeah. So you see, this photo became this drawing. Isn't that cool? I don't know. I. It's as I said. It's something I haven't played with for a while. But I just think the whole idea of distortion in our art making is really an interesting direction to go. There are other ways you can do this. If you have a coffee pot or a toaster that's that's chrome, that's metal, you can draw. You can look at your image in that too, right? You can you can um, you can really anything that's reflective and not flat will make some form of a distortion. And it's really interesting to do, like you could do, uh, if, you dist if you have um, a real kind of wide angle effect, you can distort your head and then you could even make the room all distorted and do interesting things. So it's the kind of thing that we can't do without a mechanical device. I mean, we could, f we could f kind of do it in an imaginary way, but there's something kind of cool about having this unreal thing to look at and yet draw realistically, draw from observation and yet end up with something distorted. Okay. So that's kind of, um, yes. I mean, as Janice says, you could use a convex or concave mirror if you have one lying around the house. I'm not sure why you would, but, um, yes. And as CW says, it's nice ways to generate caricatures. So yeah, it's a caricature, instant caricature, right? So we're instantly getting, you know, um, this whole thing, chrome toaster, uh, and, um, you know, so we can use the app or we can, um, you know, you can just work along with me if you don't have it, or if you do have something like that. And as Chris makes a good point, which is distortion is freeing. He's right. Distortion is freeing because we're, we're less worried about making a mistake because the whole thing is screwy, right? So if we get wonky, if our drawings, if our reproduction of it is not perfectly accurate, it's fine, you know? So, you know, so let's go back to having a look at this. Let's have a look at my incredible um, selection of, you know, I mean, this, of course, brings in my inner uh, eight-year-old. But there's just so many different things you can do. I mean, this is like a Francis Bacon painting. I bet you Francis Bacon would have loved photo booth, right? This is sort of like Francis Bacon. So you could take this and, and again, we can just use this as, as a structure for a, an imaginative drawing that, uh, you know, we can go in all different directions with. So, yeah, so we can just pick one and, uh, you can also, with this thing, you can also do it, you can, you can record videos this way and you don't have to necessarily take a photo. This is the mirror thing, which is kind of insane. So you get this sort of distortion. I mean, look at that. That's like a photo of a cartoon character, but it's not, you know? So, um, so I'm just going to pick one. I think I'm going to pick this one. This one is, <laughs> it's pretty nuts, right? Pretty nuts. So, yeah. So anyway, so yeah, so I did a, I mean, I uh, sometimes do these distorted things anyway, right? So, I mean, I'm, I draw distortions naturally. 
um, but this is just a way of having um, you know a common reference for us for us that is that is this weird photo so if you want to draw this with me by all means if you want to um, distort your own if you want to just watch while we all do it it's up to you. I'm, going to use, I'm using this um, this Hanamura this is a Harmony watercolor paper and it's hot press. That's the reason I'm using it. It's hot press because I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this thing, but I'm kind of thinking I want to draw it in ink, maybe with a dip pen. And then um, I might want to, I might want to um, do some watercolor or something else on it. But this, it's nice and smooth, so I can draw it with a dip pen. And also I feel like I have the opportunity to work with ink, with watercolor, with color pencil, whatever I want. So I don't know where this is going to go yet, and so we'll find out. That's going to be the fun of this whole thing. All right, you guys with me? Are we all distorting together? Okay, so feel free to use this. You know, you know what this kind of looks, I don't know, to me it looks like um, Quentin Tarantino, maybe. Um, I just read Quentin Tarantino's novel, which is called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, based on the movie that he did. And he did this, he wrote this, I thought it was a pretty fun novel. It's, it's like a novelization of the movie, sort of, but not really. It's, it's actually got way more to it than that. And uh, I, I actually really have had fun with it. Oh, great. Let's start right there. Let's start with a blob on the page. This pen, I haven't used this pen in a while. It's misbehaving. But, yeah. So, it, this, is, this is quite... Um, I find it, I'm finding it not terribly difficult to do these kinds of drawings just because, um, it, you know, as I said before, it doesn't really matter if I screw it up, but um, I have a guide, you know, so I'm using my imagination, but I also have a guide for my imagination. So when I make any kind of variation, It's, it's okay. I mean, I have, I have kind of a, a platform to build on. So I'm just using this India ink because I'm thinking that it will be the most flexible option for later on. dot well I'll figure it out you know they say dots happen do they say that well they will now oh, this makes my eyelashes look so lovely can see very little of the eye here, so I might make, actually make it a bit more prominent. I'm gonna have to navigate past this dot, but maybe the dot will become, maybe I can figure out some way to integrate this dot into this whole masterpiece.
now. I'm feeling a metaphor coming on. There's a metaphor in here of distorting myself in this way. I'm thinking about how easy it is to really dis to distort what you see, you know. As artists, our job really is to is to observe. Is to that, I mean that's I think that's really at the heart of what it is that we as artists are doing is we're we're noticing things. We're seeing things, seeing things often more clearly than non-artists see them. You know, people talk about artists as being like, oh, you know, he's got his head in the clouds and he's, you know, just kind of out of it. And, and I just think that that's nonsense. We, we, we actually see stuff way more clearly than anybody else because we spend a lot of time looking. And really, you know, if you, if you can't see clearly as an artist, it really makes it difficult to do a proper drawing. Um, even if you're... Even if you're drawing from your imagination, I think you still need to have some basis in reality to make to make stuff feel right. And and yet, even as artists, we have such a tendency to distort in our perceptions of things, not not our literal perceptions necessarily, but our our perceptions of ourselves in the world our perceptions of how other people see us, um, our perceptions of whether or not, you know, we have the right to do things as artists. Do we have the right to be artists? Do we have the... Um, you know, we, we, we just... We, we can... And I think all human beings can do this, is, is we think things are one way when in fact they're not. And a lot of times we deny ourselves opportunities, we deny ourselves the freedom to do the things we truly want to do because we've distorted how we see things. And uh, We're not seeing as clearly as we should and, and as a result we're kind of robbing ourselves of things because we think you know um, the world is one way when in fact maybe it's not we you know I mean it can even be something as simple as oh I can't draw or I can't draw X or I can't be an artist or uh, I'm I uh, how, how we judge our own work when you look at your work do you have a clear sense of what it really is, of whether, of what its strengths are, of what its weaknesses are? How good are you at that? Or have you distorted it in some way, you know, through the prism of your own mind or the prism of your past? I said prison, but it's actually prism. But yeah, prison too, that we aren't seeing clearly. All right, so imagine I don't have a giant beauty mark next to my eye. I find like I have to talk to myself a lot about where the things really are as I am imagining them. Is the world really working the way that uh, the voice in my head is telling me it's working? You know, that voice that I call the monkey voice, that, that inner critic that can sabotage you or limit you. You know, because again, it's distorting your experience of the world. I don't have the top of my head here, so I'm going to have to imagine it. And I'm going to do that by seeing... I think I have to draw my ear first. Draw the ear so that I can have that as the basis for...
This is another thing. It's like I find a lot of people so hesitant to draw themselves because they say, I don't like the way I look. You know, that's because there's, I think, again, there's distortion between how we think we look and how the world actually sees us looking. And this kind of a, an exercise is an opportunity to say, all right, I'm going to distort the way I look and then maybe it becomes a bit more palatable to work with. My God, what's going on out there? Sorry, I hope this isn't too loud. We've had so much rain recently that the uh, garden has gone nuts and, and our lawn guy has to do extra, extra work to manage it, beat it back into submission. What do you think? Does it look like the, the distorted me? I think it's pretty good. It's pretty, I think the top of my head became a little, a little more pointed than it might, might have been, but. And actually that dot, remember that dot that was such a disaster? I don't even think you really notice it very much. Some art historian will come along in a century and say, ah, yes, that dot. This is a signature of, of Gregory's work. He often puts these very carefully and strategically placed ink splotches to uh, draw the eye in. They're also a metaphor for the human condition and the fact that, uh, I don't know. I'm not an art historian, but I can imagine that they will be able to come up with something, something um, astute or at least impressive when they're analyzing this, as no doubt they will. No doubt some 23rd century art historians will be intensely interested in all of my work. Speaking of distortion, okay, this is kind of, it's kind of silly, it's kind of fun, and uh, I'm going to let it sit for a minute, just to let it dry. I do need to pick Make sure that that blotch is under control, though. Because that blotch... There we go. Sometimes with uh, India ink and a dip pen, your ink can just get a bit heavy. But... Uh, I might even take another pen um, and just finesse those edges because I don't really like that blotchiness there. So yeah, just take a fine liner. And there. Okay, so I can let that sit for a minute. 
have a sip of coffee, wait for it to dry. Yeah. How are yours coming along? It's true, Bob Hope knows, Joe said. And I kind of didn't capture the Bob Hope nose. I gave it more of a snub nose. But again, that's okay. In fact, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do a little something, something there. Bix asks, am I using a permanent water-soluble ink? I'm using India ink which is permanent. Because I plan to do some, some, um, some water coloring, probably, or some liquid ink. Yeah. It is true, it is one big white eyeball. But you can still see enough of the iris to understand what it is, that it isn't just like I lost an eye, I'm hoping. Dana says, even though it's distorted, it's very recognizable as a portrait of you. That's true. And that's what I found when I was doing, let me just show you these while this sits off and dries. This thing, the teeth, I mean, I know, maybe it doesn't look like that much of a snaggle teeth, but this one, I thought this is great. It sort of has an, El, uh, an Elmer Fudd, Mr. Magoo quality to it, but I also thought like, that's basically me. You know? So I was quite pleased with that one. Distortion is fun. Janice, this is so freeing. It's good. I'm glad that you're having fun with it. It is, it is, uh, because you could do a super accurate drawing of, um, you could do a super accurate drawing of your distortion and it would be okay. Right? It would be okay. Because I'm in a rush and I don't want to make you just sit around watching ink dry, I'm going to, yeah, this is not a great idea. I was going to just sort of try and absorb some of the uh, words to the end of the ink here, but I'm afraid I'm going to screw up my lines if I do it too much. So we may have to just be patient, which is not one of my superpowers. Okay. So, yeah. There's nothing worse than training for paint or ink to dry. It's true. That's why it's like good to have, you know what? Let's do this. Let's draw a cat while we're waiting. I didn't plan to draw on this page because there's a little bit of of uh, cat detritus over here. But let's just quickly draw a cat in India ink, seeing as we've got the India ink here. And uh, let's just draw a cat while we wait for the other one to dry. What do you think? I'm going to get rid of... No, I won't get rid of me yet. I'll keep me there. But um, make it a bit smaller. All right, so here's kind of what I'm learning about cats. Biggish ears that are always, almost always standing up. I've done a few cats that are mad. Um, what else? They uh, will sometimes have this smooth sides to their faces, but sometimes not. Their faces are generally fairly oval. You could give it a neck, but they almost never seem to have necks. So they just have a body. And then you can draw some hairy stuff in here in the ears if you want to. And then the eyes. Eyes are often ovalish. And you've got sort of the sides of the nose that are pretty incidental. Then you've got the bottom of the nose that has maybe a couple small nostrils in it. Then you have this little thing. And then you have a smallish mouth. And then you have, um, you know, cat pupils. They seem to vary. They're, they're generally kind of, they can be like that, like a little slit. Then you can have your 
your uh, little bits of whisker stubble there and then a couple of things like that and then a lot of them will have this sort of uh, stuff coming stripes like that stripes on the side like that and then yeah so you know if i had done if i had just done this two weeks ago it would have saved myself a lot of trouble but no but now i know how to do that so that's a cat right am i wrong that's a cat all cats are striped seriously even black cats and white cats himalayans that's interesting all right so that's a cat that's kind of where i'm at in my cat education so far it's a serviceable cat it will do it will do to be number 62 don't you think let's get that cat out of there let's get this ogre back in here <laughs> all right so what should i do here thinking let's go to town as they say so i'm just going to use some ink i think i think some ink some this is canary yellow ink i know we'll see we'll see how this goes this could be the bit that i ruined it in but maybe not it's only ruined if you stop there's a quote. It's only ruined if you stop. It means you're like, okay, that's it. I'm walking away. Sometimes it's a wise thing to do, but sometimes you need to just keep keep at it. So Jennifer's suggesting that I put a cat on my shoulder. That I wouldn't have that expression if I had a cat on my shoulder. sure what I would be thinking but I don't mind cats I really don't I just um, they're just not in my wheelhouse I'm not familiar with them that much I haven't spent much time with them I think that they're I think I find them a little bit more intimidating perhaps just because I'm not that familiar with them and because they they move slightly differently than than dogs do they have very subtle, supple bods. See, I like this. Um, remember, I said earlier I'm using this Hunter with the watercolor paper because I wasn't sure where I would go with it, you know, but I'm finding like, okay. I'm cool because I know that it's going to stand up to to this ink. It's going to stand up to probably decide to add some watercolor later on. I'm cool, but also it's smooth. That's that's the that's the thing about watercolor papers. If you are an ink artist, as I basically am, um, you can feel like it's harder to maintain real control when you're drawing on nubbly paper. Not sure where I'm going with this color yet. And I may not be able to finish it in time because I do have a couple other things to talk to you about before we stop. But See that? That ink is not ready for prime time. That's okay. You can just push it to the edges 
And actually, it's, it's actually quite a nice effect. As I said before, it's like it's not, it's not a mistake until you stop. And you go, yeah, I have to walk away from this because I've ruined it. And if you stop at that point, then yeah, it's ruined. But if you keep going, you'll get somewhere good. I'm afraid that this ink isn't fully dried. Indie ink can be like that. It can really feel like it's good. You're good. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm fully dry, but it's not actually. So I may have to finish this later on just because I'm rushing it and I'm going to ruin it. So let's set it aside for now. Sorry, distortion man, but all right. So that was fun, right? We took we took something, we took a a, a computer tool, a photographic tool. We can use it to our advantage, right? So I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with that because there's so many so many things we can do with that. I want to show you um, a, a pretty cool sketchbook in a sec. And um, I also want to remind you about a couple things that are coming up. And one of them is I, I want to talk about this week in Spark. It's a new thing that I want to try doing is to tell you, you know, there's a lot of people who are in Spark who come here to uh, watch Draw With Me because we do stuff. Well, anyway, and um, one of the things that we do, this is I want to just talk about what's happening in this week in Spark. Spark has a lot of cool stuff happening, some brand new things. So Spark is our membership program at Sketchbook School, in case you don't know that. But one of the things is the Lively City is our new workshop happening this weekend. I mentioned it before. Of course, if you're a Spark member, you get to come to it for free. Monday, Art Before Breakfast. So that's a thing that I do first thing Monday morning. I sent out a, I sent out a prompt on Friday, and we're going and we're gonna work on it together on Monday. And Tuesday, draw with me. Uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday, draw tip Tuesday. Kosha comes to show us some cool ideas to help advance us in some cool ways. And uh, then we also, we're bringing back show and talk, which is something we haven't done for months, but I think it's a really cool thing, which is basically you bring your work that you'd like to get some feedback on. So you bring whatever, any form of art that you've made or in the process of making and you can share it with the group and we can talk about it in a constructive, positive way that'll help you to make it even better. I think it's a really cool thing. We, sh we really should be doing this more and I'm glad we're gonna be doing that. Floral Fun, that starts on Friday. It's a brand new thing. We're gonna be drawing flowers with Allie and it's gonna be really interesting, I think. Um, we're gonna have an opportunity to learn botanical techniques and to just draw some flowers. And then um, a brand new thing, Saturday morning cartoons. Grew out of cartooning club that we just started. And that's gonna be, Suzanne is gonna take us on Saturday morning. We're gonna do some cartooning. She's gonna bring in guest um, artists from the world of graphic novels and comic art. And that's gonna be pretty cool. So I'm excited about that. So yeah, so, so Spark is full of, I think it's over 20 mini workshops every single week. I don't know that anybody goes to all of them. It would be insane if you did. But that, what I just showed you is a half a dozen of the, new, of the ones that we're doing next week. It's gonna be really fun. So thank you. I see a bunch of Spark folks are in the audience and that's great, cool. Um, that is, it's gonna be really fun. All right, so um, what else? I want to share with you uh, a, a sketchbook by Kathy Johnson. I look at Kathy Johnson's sketchbook a lot recently because she draws cats beautifully. Kathy Johnson is an amazing artist in many regards, but she, but nature is probably what she's best known for. And um, she has taught at sketchbook school. She's a friend of sketchbook school, and she is the author of many books about uh, nature journaling and um, just drawing in a sketchbook and she's been somebody who has been very um, very instrumental in my development. I've looked at her work a lot. I've talked to her a lot about it. She's, uh, she's just great. So um, I just wanted to share with you her sketchbook.
<sighs> Envy is one of the seven deadly sins, I have to say, but when I look at her stuff, I think, like, couldn't I just have done that? So she's done a couple books. This is Artist Journal Workshop. I have to say, despite what I just said, see those drawings there? That's my drawings on the cover. Yeah, I have a few things in here, but so do a lot of other people who are incredibly capable. She also did this book, Artist Sketchbook, um, which is also really great. Am I in here? I think I am. I don't even remember. I hope so. I have to look at that again. I haven't looked at this book in a while. But uh, let me just look in the... I don't know. Yeah, maybe am I? I know I definitely am in the other one, obviously, because I'm on the cover. But yeah, I think I'm in here, too. Anyway. But enough about me. <laughs> Kathy Johnson. Amazing artist. And uh, fortunately a member of the sketchbook school world. So that's, that's nice. So, um, yes, what else? What else did I want to say? Um, I just want to tell you that I would like to see your distorted drawings from today so I can share them at the, not next week, because I won't be here next week, but the week after. Um, I want to be able to share that. And uh, as Laura says, yeah, put those Amazon gift cards to good use. Buy Kathy Johnson's books. If you want to, I have a few books you could buy. I won't name them all, but there are a bunch that you could buy. Just look me up. Um, yes, so hashtag SBS Draw with me. If you've made a distortion picture that you'd like us to share at the beginning of the next uh, installment of Draw with me, put it on social media, put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook, put it in the Sketchbook School schoolyard, and tag it hashtag SBS draw with me and it's draw it's three words or four words SBS draw and so there's two W's for a while I was putting it with only one W draw with me but I've learned that better to not do that um, what else subscribe to this channel I assume you have but if you haven't you won't be notified when we do more cool stuff I have a new video that I'm quite pleased with it's gonna come out on Monday um, and if you subscribe, then you'll be notified about it. So it's partly for you, but it's really for mankind that I ask you to subscribe and to like this video. Here's what happens. If you subscribe and like the Sketchbook School channel, then the all-knowing God that is the YouTube algorithm will promote and popularize this channel soon every one of the seven billion people who watch YouTube videos will have Sketchbook School videos about drawing served up to them and they will say, you know what? I should draw more. I haven't even thought about it. I haven't drawn in years. That would be so much fun. I should totally do that. Imagine if the entire planet was filled with people drawing. First of all, there'd be enormous art supply shortages, which is a small price to pay, but the world will definitely be a better place. Even if it's full of bad drawings, it will be better than if it doesn't have drawings in it at all. So all this will happen. All you have to do to contribute to this incredible transformation, be the change that you want to have happen, is to subscribe to this channel. And if you click the little bell, you'll be notified and that will be even better. So how's that for a reason to subscribe? The Lively City is this weekend. I have to say, of all the workshops we've done in a long time, this is the one that people have been talking to me about the most. They're really excited by working with Jedediah Doré. Uh, I didn't talk about the details of this workshop today too much because I have already, but if you want to find out more about it, look in the notes below and you'll see how to go to it. But it's, you have to sign up by tomorrow because it's on Saturday. Sign up by tomorrow, join us on Saturday. This is the one that I think is so interesting. We're going to be using this new, um, watercolor set from Derwin. If you have it, if you don't have it, you can use any watercolor set you have. But it's about, about how to do quick sketches with watercolor. Trust me, it will be transformative. And he's really fun. Jedediah is great. So cool. Next week, vacation. It's all I ever wanted. Vacation. Something to get away. Go-go's? Yeah? No? Um, yes, so that's happening. That's coming up. So next week, 
I'll be gone. I'll, uh, what we're doing is I'm going to do art before breakfast. Eat, then I'm going to eat breakfast, and then we're leaving in our car, Whew. heading out of state, heading out of the. I mean, what is it right now? 97 degrees Fahrenheit here right now at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's going to be going up, and it's getting worse and worse this week. So I am done with it. I'm leaving for a few days. Thank you, Windsor Newton, for making this stuff that I've been using. Thank you, Hannah Muller, for making this fantastic watercolor paper and for supporting Sketchbook School. So, <laughs> that's it. And then Labor Day. Here in America, Labor Day, the holiday in which we don't labor, unless you're pregnant. So, yes, do it. Have a great Labor Day and join us next time. We draw together. And by the way, just because you're not drawing with me next Thursday doesn't mean you can't draw with you. Just think, if all the people who are in the audience right now were all drawing together without me, because I'll probably be drawing too, I'll just be doing it in an undisclosed location, um, what a, how nice that will be. So draw with you next Thursday and then draw with me again the following Thursday. I think I'll be older then. Probably? Yes, probably. By then. Guys, thanks so much. Thanks for drawing with me. Thanks for distorting. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.